Let's look at a specific example of electron spin resonance. Let's look at the electron spin resonance spectrum of dibutyl nitroxide, ditertiary butyl nitroxide, which has a structure here, and this is uh, CH3 groups up here. Now, nitroxides are a particular class of organic compounds that have stable free radicals. Here's an unpaired electron just hanging out. Normally, in organic chemistry, if you have an unpaired electron, it's very reactive and it'll react with something and won't hang around for very long. But it turns out the nitroxides are actually quite stable. They'll just last almost forever. So this is an example of a stable free radical. That's the disadvantage of trying to use ESR in organic chemistry, that it's very hard to get a compound that has a unpaired electron that will stick around long enough so that you can do an ESR spectrum. If you're an inorganic chemist, however, you have transition metals, and transition metals have lots of unpaired electrons, and ESR is more applicable for inorganic chemistry. All right, so let's take a look here. Di tertiary butyl nitroxide, and let's try to figure out what the spectrum will be, including the hyperfine coupling. So we'll have the, we're going to put this in a magnetic field, so we're going to split energy levels of this unpaired electron, and we'll have hyperfine coupling. Recall that hyperfine coupling has to do with the interaction of the unpaired electron with the nuclear spins uh, that it encounters in the molecule. This nitroxide hangs around mostly in the NO, the unpaired electron hangs out mostly in the NO region of the molecule. So let's see. Well, we said nitrogen. Let's take another look at nitrogen here. We're going to my favorite periodic table on the web, webelements.com. And here are the nuclear properties of uh, nitrogen. There's two naturally occurring isotopes. Most of it, over 99%, is in the nitrogen 14. So this, let's consider that. That has a nuclear spin of 1. So there's a possible interaction there. The electron can sense the nuclear spin I is equal to 1 for that nitrogen. How about the oxygen? Well, we'll take a look at the oxygen. Uh, here's oxygen. Oxygen has one, two, three stable isotopes. Well, over 99% is oxygen 16, which has a nuclear spin of zero. If you have a nuclear spin of zero, there'll be no interaction, so I equals zero. And then, well, maybe uh, there's a carbon here and a carbon here. Maybe this electron can wander up here and sense the nuclear spin of carbon or even wander all the way up here and sense the nuclear spin of hydrogen. So maybe we'll consider those also. But those would be weaker couplings because they're, the electron is mostly sitting around here. But it can travel up there because we know from quantum mechanics that you know we have a molecular orbital, the whatever wave function that this unpaired electron is spreads out over the molecule and so maybe it can sense it there. So let's look at carbon. Carbon has two naturally occurring isotopes. Uh, almost 99% is carbon 12 which has a nuclear spin of zero. We also have carbon 13 which has a nuclear spin of one half but let's ignore that. Let's just say it's mostly carbon 12. So the carbon has a nuclear spin I equal zero so you would not expect any interaction of the unpaired electron with a nuclear spin of carbon-12. It has I equals zero, no spin. And finally, let's look at hydrogen. Let's look at the nuclear properties of hydrogen. Hydrogen, uh, the most abundant isotope, over 99.99% is H1, and that has a nuclear spin of one-half. OK, so that can interact. And here's deuterium. Deuterium has a spin of 1, but that's very low abundance, so let's ignore that. So the hydrogen will have a spin I equal 1 half. So we expect that splitting not, might not be very strong. Let's ignore that for now. And therefore, we predict the spectrum of ditertiary butyl nitroxide to be primarily a three-line spectrum, like we had in the previous example. We have a line here, a line here and a line here. And the separation between these two is called the hyperfine. Again, this is intensity versus frequency. And we expect the frequency to be in the gigahertz range. This is called the uh, hyperfine coupling constant. Hyperfine coupling constant. So that's what you predict. And in fact, that's what you measure. All right, so let's do something with this ditertiary butyl nitroxide.
let's have uh, say a sample here's a sample here and this is an artist conception <laughs> it's an aqueous sample so we have h2o here and inside this uh, sample we've added a model membrane say a lipid bilayer membrane it's a all right, it's not really that big compared to the sample size. And what we have here, as you may remember from biology or someplace else, or maybe not, just take it on faith, that this membrane is a bilayer, and inside the membrane is uh, hydrophobic, because these are hydrocarbon tails that point inward. Inside here will be water, outside the membrane will be water, but right there is a hydrophobic region. Now if we add ditertiary butyl nitroxide into this sample, here we'll have ditertiary butyl nitroxide in the water phase, but it'll also go into the membrane phase, which is a different environment, and it might have a different ESR spectrum. Well, let's take a look. Yes, it is. This is the ESR spectrum of ditertiary butyl nitroxide in lipid bilayers. And maybe you could see that this is a superimposition of two three-line spectra. Okay, so here's, let me make this a little bigger. Three-line spectra, three-line spectra, but they're shifted a little bit. So this is really interesting because now you have a handle on a non-electrolyte inside a membrane which is generally kind of hard to get a handle on and you can look at for instance how much is in the membrane versus how much is in the water by integrating these peaks here and you can also by looking at some dynamics look at how this actual non-electron is moving around inside the bilayer I should mention by the way that these spectra were taking on and taken on an old style ESR spectrometer which records the first derivative of the absorption spectrum. So there it is and that's how you uh, use of ditertiary butyl nitroxide or in general of ESR.